In this problem, we're going to prove this equation where a and b are constants. So there is some implied notation in all of this. So if we know that a and b are constants and we have this capital N here, we can assume that whenever we see the sum of the x's, that really means the sum as j runs from 1 to n of x sub j. Likewise, when we see the sum of the y's, that really means the sum as j runs from 1 to n of y sub j. So uh, just some implied notation to, to be aware of. Let me just clean up this y with using a capital Y, so there we go. So let's go ahead and uh, try to go through this proof. So keeping this in mind, so proof. You know, this shorthand notation is, is used a lot in a lot of texts and a lot of uh, mathematical stuff that's written uh, because it's cleaner, right? It's, it's easier to write this than to have to write all of this. So we'll start with the left-hand side. So we have the sum, and I'll, I'll stick to this shorthand notation, x plus a, y plus b. And so now I guess we can multiply this out. So this is equal to the sum. So let's just distribute x times y is xy. And then we have a times y, which is ay. So plus ay. Then we have x times b, which is simply, we can write that as bx. And then a times b is simply ab. And I multiplied it out in this order. I, do, I did x times y, a times y, because I saw the y first. And then, I did, then we did um, x times b, and then a times b, and we got this. So now we can break this up into four individual sums. So this is the sum of x times y plus and then it'll be the sum of a times y, but a is a constant, so we can pull that out. So it'll be a times the sum of the y's plus then the sum of bx, but b is a constant, so we can pull that out. So it'll be b times the sum of the x's plus the sum of ab. So we're almost there, right? We have the xy, we have the ay, we have the bx, all that's good. We just have to deal with this. Let's go ahead and finish it up. This is equal to the sum of the xy's plus a times the sum of the y's plus b times the sum of the x's. And then this sum, if you remember from before, the sums here are going from 1 to n. So we basically have a, b plus a, b plus a, b, and there's n of them. So if you think simple, think, say we have two of them, then it would be plug in one, you get AB, you add plug in two, you get AB, so you get two AB. So if you have a three here, you get three AB. If you have a four here, you get four AB. We have an implied N here, so we get N AB. And that would be the complete proof. And that's it. So, and again, the reason I knew that this notation was implied was because of the n, right? This n appears nowhere, so it must be the upper limit in the summation. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.